Hi there, my name is Kieran Milne. I'm a tech lead with the Juniper Networks Certification Program in Education Services here at Juniper Networks. This Learning Byte is the first in a series on class of service basics for Junospace devices. So the first obvious question, what is class of service? Well, depending on who you talk to, you can hear a lot of different definitions for class of service. But the one we're going to use today is that class of service facilitates the prioritization of traffic flows over a common path. What this does is it gives us a way to recognize and control different types of traffic. And by extension, we can prioritize one application as more or less important than another. It also gives us a mechanism to manage congestion when too much traffic is trying to go through a particular device. Now it's worth noting that cost is performed on a hop by hop basis. We often think of a class of service as an end to end solution across a network. But in practice, you need to implement costs at each device in the data path. And it's that work that results in giving us an end to end cost solution. Now, you may have heard the terms class of service and quality of service and wondered if there's a difference between the two. Now, depending on who you talk to, again, definitions can vary. Some folks consider that cost defines more broad traffic classes, whereas QoS defines the more particular implementation details. Some other people consider that cost runs at layer two, whereas QoS runs at layer three. So no matter how it's defined, for this discussion here today, they're effectively the same thing. Juniper Networks calls it cost or class of service. And what's important here is how to implement it on a Juno space device. And so, you know, in the end, the differentiation of the two names really isn't that important. A couple of common terms you should be aware of for, for class of service. The first is bandwidth. That one we all know, right? Uh, a 10 megabit link, a 50 megabit link. It's the amount of data that you can fit on a particular link. Delay is the next one. That's the amount of time it takes for a packet to get from its source to its destination. Delay across the network. Now, a related item is delay variation, which is also called jitter. Now, that's the variation in the delay time across the network from source to destination. This can uh, impact the quality of your application in, in a great way or, or really no way at all, depending on the application. Uh, if you're sending web traffic, a little bit of variation doesn't make a big difference. But on the other hand, if you were trying to run a VoIP call, it could make a huge difference that the packets are not coming in a consistent stream. Uh, that could really affect the quality of the call. And the final one is loss. Packets come into a device, that device is becoming congested, and so some packets have to get dropped. Well, that packet dropping is considered loss from a cost perspective. It's worth taking a quick look at the fields in the packet headers where cost is supported and implemented. On an IPv4 packet towards the top left there, you can see that there's a type of service byte or toss byte. Originally, this was implemented with the first three bits of it as an IP precedence field. However, over time, it became necessary and desired to have more variations, more options for the number of bits you could set for, uh, for, for quality of service and the different options for class of service. And so it was renamed to be the diff serve code point, six bits long, as you can see, with a fair number of variations to, uh, to use. This model transcends across to IPv6 and with Ethernet and MPLS as well. Now, this slide is kind of the master slide for our entire cost basics series. These are the typical cost stages that a packet will go through on a Juno space device. They are classification, policing, queuing and scheduling, and remarking. Now, I'm not going to go through the definitions here because we'll be discussing these all on the next pages. The first, again, is classification. Now, classifiers take inbound traffic and they assign it to forwarding classes in a Junos device. What classifiers do is they help us to separate out and identify different flows of traffic based on a variety of the fields in the packet headers. You can differentiate and identify traffic based on its incoming cost header, so the cost bits, or you can be very granular and get into separating traffic out by its protocol, its incoming port values, its addresses, so IP address, source address, destination address. Uh, so a lot of very granular capabilities in terms of separating out traffic and assigning them to forwarding classes.
Now, it's worth mentioning that forwarding classes on the device are linked to physical queues. So when we talk about assigning traffic to a forwarding class, we are essentially putting that traffic into a queue on the device. Now, the point of classification is that this separated traffic gives us control of it in an independent fashion, and we can now hand it down the line for further cost processing and treat those flows of traffic differently as we go. The next stage in the process, policing. Policing provides an early mechanism to control incoming bursts of traffic. So, you know, one of the goals of your device could be to not allow it to, to get overly congested. And a very good way to do that at an early stage in the process is to apply a policer, uh, perhaps on an incoming interface or on a particular flow of traffic or traffic type on an incoming interface. Um, let's use an example of HTTP traffic. You know, maybe we don't consider it very important. It's just best effort traffic. And on a particular inbound interface, we want to put some throttling mechanisms on it. So we'll accept it, but only to a point. And we're not going to let that traffic overload our device. Well, a policer is perfect for that application. Policers let you configure particular thresholds, so an amount of acceptable traffic that can burst uh, up to that amount coming into the device, and then you can do a couple of things to it. You can either drop that traffic when it exceeds the, uh, the thresholds, just say, I want it off the device and get rid of it, or you can mark it down, give it lower priority so that when it's passed on further down the line for further cost processing, it's considered less important at that time. This takes us to queuing and scheduling. These are two separate but related functions that really represent the core of cost functionality on the device. They provide the mechanisms to actually prioritize traffic, give it priority as it goes out onto the wire downstream into the network, uh, the amounts of bandwidth, that sort of thing. Now there are a few mechanisms to be aware of here on a Juno Space device. The main one is queue priority. This is defining simply which traffic types get higher priority than other traffic types. Closely related to that is a transmission rate value. You can determine for each priority value what those queues get in terms of outbound bandwidth on the, on the outbound interface. So you could define a percentage of the interface that's dedicated to each queue, or you could define an amount of bandwidth. You know, you have some granularity for, for how that's done. The next parameter is delay buffer. So for each queue or forwarding class on the device, how much delay space can you buffer traffic for that particular queue? Uh, how much delay space is there? And, and you can define that on a per queue or per forwarding class basis. So maybe your more important queues get a larger delay buffer so you can hold that traffic for a period of time in hopes of being able to send it out on the wire uh, despite the box being congested right now. Uh, and you hope to still be able to get it out and not lose it entirely. And the, th the fourth one there, closely related, is congestion management. So if we do start to buffer traffic and we do have to make some decisions about it's we're going to buffer it or we're going to have to drop it and lose some of it, the congestion management mechanisms give you very granular controls in terms of defining which traffic gets dropped and how quickly does it start to get dropped. You can do some preemptive congestion management, start dropping traffic early before things get overly congested, or you can do some hard drops of traffic, uh, lots of control there. The final mechanism here, remarking. So we've done all of our cost work. We're about to send the packet out onto the wire, downstream to the next device. And what we have the ability to do is use something called rewrite rules to configure or set the cost values in the packet header for that outgoing packet. The idea here is, you know, we've just been doing a lot of work in this device defining the uh, the traffic and separating it and differentiating it from other traffic and giving it better priority or worse priority as it approaches leaving the device and getting out on the wire a and you know we've we've given it some level of importance uh, be it good or bad and so it could be useful to define that importance somehow and communicate it downstream to the next device well these rewrite rules allow us to do that you can see in the diagram there an example where a packet has come in with no cost values at all and through the course of being processed by uh, router one or R1, it gains some, uh, some cost stature, if you will. And so in this case, you can see it's been assigned a value of DSCP or diff serve code point 101. Well, as that goes downstream towards R2, R2 now can take that packet inbound and instead of going through the entire process again of differentiating that traffic and determining exactly what type of traffic flow it is, well, the first thing it can do now is simply look at the cost header, determine that it's 
priority value 101, and you can configure R2 to do something about that. Take immediate action and give it a certain priority based on that value alone. So a very efficient way to transmit and carry on all of the work that was done at the edge of your cost domain and pass that into your cost domain and throughout your cost domain. So taking that knowledge and leveraging it throughout the network. It's worth noting here that cost implementations on their own are not bidirectional. Often traffic flows in a bidirectional manner, and so we probably want a bidirectional cost implementation. But it's important to know that when you configure and implement costs on a device, it tends to be done in a unidirectional fashion. And by that I mean, let's say you write uh, or you configure a rewrite rule. Well, you would apply that onto an interface, probably an outbound interface. Well. That outbound interface, of course, is going to be different depending on which direction you're going. So, you know, that can start to sound a bit unwieldy, but the good news here is that on Junos devices, cost configuration components tend to be modularized. And that means you create the component in somewhat isolation to itself. A rewrite rule is a good example. You can create a rewrite rule, and then the second step is almost always to apply it to somewhere. So, in the case of a rewrite rule, you would apply it to its outbound interface, or you could apply it to its outbound interface in the other direction. So you can tend, you know, you tend to be able to leverage those and use them in a bi-directional fashion. But just important to note that in terms of implementing it, it's actually done on a unidirectional basis, and it's up to you to make sure you get it in both directions. So that takes us to the end of this learning bite. Uh, now, cost is a huge topic, and we certainly couldn't cover it all here. Um, so a couple of things uh, to make available to you. The first thing to note is that uh, you know it's important to review the documentation that's specific to your particular Junos device. Uh, these features can vary just slightly across the, the different product lines. The broad concepts are exactly the same, but some of the feature details can vary a little bit, so you'll always want to check your own documentation for your own device. Uh, the next logical place to go for more information on costs is our next set of learning bytes here. Uh, this is the first in the series. And uh, we'll carry on with each of those major components, classification, policing, queuing and scheduling, and remarking. And so you can look for those on the uh, Learning Bytes website and follow through the series. The next option is uh, some education services formalized training. There is a Junos Routing Essentials course, kind of introductory level information. And towards the end of that day is some cost coverage. And there's also the dedicated Junos Class of Service course, two days on, on topics such as these and more, providing very in-depth detail and coverage on the theory, implementation, uh, as well as hands-on time with all these cost features. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, product documentation is your friend. There are configuration guides for costs for each of the product lines, so you'll want to check those out for implementation details specific to your devices. And lastly, there's a day one guide called Deploying Basic QoS. This is a nice uh, overview and introduction to implementing COS uh, on your device with lots of uh, examples in the text of CLI examples of implementing the different elements. So that takes us to the end of this overview learning bite. Uh, I encourage you to carry on and, and check out the next learning bite in this series. We'll get uh, on to classification. We'll talk about it in a bit more detail and show you an example of it on a Genos device. Take care. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.